Welcome back for part two, my math party people. Welcome in, my name's Coach Anderson, and as always, thank you for trusting us. So in this video here, again, part two of our mini practice test series for arithmetic reasoning, we are gonna be going over another question that involves algebraic expressions. How do we know how to handle what's going on? Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Obviously, pause the video if you wanna give it a shot yourself, but let's go ahead and go over it. So here we go. What do we have here? What's the first thing we wanna do? We wanna read the question. So I'm gonna read the question here, and that's gonna start right over here where it says if. Now remember, when you're reading that question sentence, they're gonna give you some extra information if they say if blah, 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 blah. So don't worry about the numbers, just worry about the context, but then get to the actual goal of the question. So if the factory assigns this many workers for type A, this many workers for type B widgets, what's the total production rate of widgets per hour. That's the question that we want to focus on, my party people. What is the total production rate of the widgets per hour? Now, when I hear the word total, and I read that we have a type A widget and type B widget, total might tell me we got to add those things together, right? Cool. So just keep that in the back of your head. We'll confirm that. We'll verify it. But it kind of sounds like that's what we have to do. So let's read through the information so we can understand production rates of these widgets and see how we're gonna add them together. So here, in the beginning now, we see that it says, a factory produces two types of widgets. Of course, we saw A and B. So it says type A and type B. The production rate for type A widgets is this expression. Okay, so notice, I'm not gonna sit here and read the whole thing. I just see that it's an algebraic expression. Let's write that thing down. So here, we have type A widgets, and that's gonna be 3x over x plus two. That's the production rate for widget A per hour. Now, am I gonna to try to sit here and explain how that is gonna be a number per hour? No, I don't care. I'm just taking what they give me, okay? Then, where x is the number of workers assigned. So depending on the number of workers that we have, I see we'll have a different production rate. Okay, cool. So then it says, over here, the production rate for type B widgets is this fraction. So I'm gonna write type B over here, and I'm gonna say 2x over x minus one. And again, the x represents the number of workers assigned. Now they tell us right after this that the factory assigns, I'm gonna highlight this, five workers to produce type A widgets. So I'm gonna replace each of these x's with five. And then we also have four workers to produce type B widgets. So I'll replace that x over here with four. So are you seeing where we're going with this now? Look at the final answer. The final answer is a fraction without the variable, without the x. So we kind of have to go ahead and replace the x with something, and that's what they give us here. For type A, they gave us 5 for the x. And then for type B, they give us x equals 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in each of those values for the corresponding widgets. Then, understanding that if I'm trying to get the total production rate, if I have type A at this many widgets per hour, type B at this many widgets per hour, getting the total just means add. And that's what I'm going to do in the end. So again, this is something that we have to be very comfortable doing because you're going to have some questions where it's not going to be a formula that you know. It might just be a formula that's given to you and you have to be able to interpret what to plug in and where. So let's go ahead and crush this next part here, my party people. This next part is gonna be just plugging in and solving. So let me zoom on in over here. This first one, let's replace that with five. So we are going to have three times five all over five plus two. Nice and easy, right? So now that we're here, let's just go ahead and simplify this. On the top, we have three times five, so that is going to be 15. So I'll replace that with 15. And then we have five plus two in the denominator. Five plus two, that's gonna be seven. So let's replace that there. Next up, for the B side, we're gonna replace the X with four and see where we go from there. And so my part of people remember, as we continue working through this, I have a full program that's gonna help you get test ready. We have all the classes and recordings so you can work on your schedule. 
tens of thousands of practice problems and practice tests to make sure that every single step of the way, no matter where you are needing to refresh or taking the test next week, we've got your back. So go ahead, click the link in the description of this video or my bio, and then text me asking for more information about my full program, because that's how my students raise their scores and get the jobs they want. And so you shouldn't be left out from that equation. So with that, let's keep it going here. My party people, we have two X divided by X minus one. Let's plug in that four. So we will have two multiplied by four all over, and that's gonna be four minus one. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did before, simplify here. So two times four, that'll be eight. Four minus one, that's gonna end up being three. Nice and easy, we're good there. And again, we're still adding these. So now that we're here, doesn't this seem a lot easier? Now we're just adding two fractions. So let's go ahead and figure out what the least common denominator is so we can move forward nice and easy. So here we have seven and three in our denominators. What's the least common denominator between them or least common multiple? Well, seven and three don't share any factors, so we can just multiply them together to get 21. And there we go. So to get 21 from seven, we will multiply the numerator and denominator by three. To get to 21 over here on the right side, we'll multiply the numerator and denominator by seven. So now that we're here, everybody, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before and simplify. 45 is gonna be 15 times three. Seven times three, that's gonna be 21, what we were trying to get for a denominator. And then we have eight times seven, that's gonna be 56 right over here. And then we have three times seven, that's gonna be 21. Again, as expected, because we want the same denominator. So now that we're here, we can add these two fractions together. So we will go ahead and write this as a denominator of 21. What is 45 plus 56? Well, we can say 40 plus 50 is 90. Five plus six is 11. 90 plus 11 is 101. So 101 over, I'm going to highlight this in red, 101 over 21, that will be the total production rate of widgets per hour. So there we are, my Porter people. We can highlight the correct answer here as answer choice A. And there we go. So if this problem seems a little unique to you, well, you got to get ready for these types of questions. You have to be able to handle algebraic expressions and work with it in context. So as always, my Porter people, if you're looking to raise your score and get the job you want, join my ASVAB All Access program. It's the most affordable program out there, the best program out there, and I'll have your back every single step of the way until you pass. Again, text me, my phone number's right there, and click the link in my bio or description of this video so you know exactly how it works, and you can join thousands of my students who've gotten the jobs that they've wanted to. With that said, everybody, love y'all. My name's Coach Anderson. Make sure to follow, comment, that way you can see more of this, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. All right, so you made it to the end, but are you feeling like, yeah, coach, this video made sense, but when I try it on my own, it's not as easy. If that sounds like you, then what you need is a tailored approach to your situation, and that's what my full program does. I've been doing this for well over five years, I've been teaching for over a decade, and I've been here to help you and everybody else who wants to take their career seriously to get them to ace the ASVAB. I'm Coach Anderson, sign up, show up, and let's ace the ASVAB.